Oh my God. Oh my God. It's William Shatner. Is is uh, where do you know where uh, the Comic Con is? I do. Okay, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Dubai would you City? like a ride? I can give you a ride. I no, no, I've got one ride after another. Okay, here, but, uh, I bet everybody wants to give you a ride. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's just painful. Can I tell you? Yes. Oh, this is a big deal for me. Let me tell you, my mouth is agape <laughs> the whole time. I'm sucking in sand. <laughs> Do you need some water? Can we get you well, some water? Well, somebody asked me that before. I said yes, and nothing's happened. Oh, my God. Well, we, oh my God. we need to get you some water. Um, please, could someone get Mr. Shatner some water? Can I call you Mr. Shatner? Uh, yeah. No, you can call me Bill. Is it Bill. Bill. That is the biggest thing ever that's happened to me. Uh, William yes, Shatner you've says... you got to reach out and do bigger things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I've been doing radio for a while. I've been doing radio for a while, about 15 years. Yeah, really. And, and this is the biggest thing for me ever. Fantastic. means a lot to me well, that you came in. Well, if, in that case, this means a lot to me, too. Aww. Actually, I'm serious. This this city has just made... I, I, it's a long time since I've been astounded. Is it your first time in Dubai? Yes. Okay. And, and, yeah, first impression. So so they've given you... They've kind of just driven you back and forth, and you've kind of seen what's going on. Well, well not even that. We arrived last evening, and so I've spent the intervening hours since then and now in bed. Oh. Yeah, I know. You've got to be jet-lagged, right? Well, no, no. I'm good now. Okay. I slept the whole time. Yeah. Um, we're, we're really excited to have you here. Middle East Film and Comic Con, uh, is all this weekend. It yeah. kicks off today. Yeah. Um, I want to... Where it, is it? It's at the Dubai World Trade Center. It's this all right, huge so we gotta, place. So who's coming? Like, who would come? Wh where is the audience collected You're from? surprised. You're surprised that there's an audience for this kind of stuff here. I am, but, I, but they keep telling me all over the mi uh, Mideast. I yeah, mean, people will come. Uh, well, obviously, Dubai and Abu Dhabi are yeah. huge cities, and, and people will come. How far is Abu Dhabi? About a 90-minute drive. Really? Yeah, to the heart of the city. You can be there in 45 minutes to the outside. And why would you go from Dubai to Abu Dhabi? Uh, you would go for the fastest roller coaster in the world. In Abu Dhabi? Yeah, in uh, Yaz Island. But I'll bet you Dubai City will have the fastest roller coaster. Someday. We will be there. Shortly, there. someday. If I looked at, there was a roadway being built in the middle of uh, Dubai City. Yes. And I asked the guy, how long do you think it'll be useful? Thinking, you know, in terms of years, because only the columns are up. Right. He said, in a couple of months. Yeah, sure. Anywhere else, it would be two, three, five years before that roadway would be uh, able to be used. And here... In this city, everything just starts and... We've got big dreams. Big dreams in Dubai. Well, bigger than dreams, because we looked outside the, uh, the hotel window, and there's, it, there's a skyscraper crawling with people. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are masses of people, like ants, making <laughs> cells, you know, yes, where they're yeah, going yeah. to put the, the, the young and the, and the food. <laughs> We're all a bunch of bees. Uh, We're well, bees no, and ants. this is an ant colony. Yeah, it's, it's an ant colony. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's fun. I hope. I'm sure they will. They'll take you to the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Uh, I'm going to go there after this broadcast. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, there's a guy who lives there. Yeah. He himself is jaw dropping, but the building itself. I don't know how architecturally, structurally, uh, the building stands. How can it be possible, right? Yeah, because they curve. And that curve would weaken the structural strength, you would think. You would think. I'm not a, an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Even engineers, I know, or their, their mouths like, are agape. How is that possible? Yeah, I know, that I know possible? this. This is a, a, an amazing statistic that's completely boring, but um, this building holds the record for the highest concrete pumping there, no, Gee, no concrete has ever been pumped that high. I'm bored immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Can I no, that, well, that's astonishing. I, it's pretty, it's, yeah, I think it's cool. Besides being the tallest, you know, man-made structure yeah. in the history of our race. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We're just going up. And, and, and eventually we'll build one to space, I'm sure. It, it'll just be a building to space. Well, 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 there is the science fiction concept of the space elevator. Exactly, right? And, and, and exactly how it floats up there and how it stays up there, they don't bother to explain that. It yeah. just is. Yeah, where does the top, you know, yeah, is it how does it, is <laughs> How does it keep up there? But it's a, there's an elevator mm -hmm. which takes supplies to orbiting spaceships, right. much like a dock would, would supply right. a, a freighter coming in. Right, right, right. Would you but, take a space elevator? Uh, only to the top floor. I wouldn't stop in between. <laughs> Can I do this? Can I do a little William Shatner true or false? You just do anything you want. This right. is your radio show. All right, all right. I love you. I love you so much. Okay, the thing is, 
I didn't have my, my this parents, is the biggest thing that's happened. It to is. Me it is, and today. it's happening now. And, and I'm right. going to forget. You know, I'm going to be like, why didn't you ask this later on? And, I, and um, my parents both worked when I was a kid, and so television was my. What kind of work did they do? Uh, my mom's a factory worker. My dad's a police officer. Okay, so no broadcasting there. No, no, not at all. No, they, they think I'm weird. They're just like, what's wrong with you? How did that, how did that happen? And, and how come you're making such big money? <laughs> Dubai. Um, <laughs> No. Um, so basically, they'd set me down on the TV, and that was my parent. Television uh -huh. was my parent. So right. oh. you were one of my iconic heroes. What an interesting thing. I'm your... You're like my dad. Can I, can I call you dad? No, call me Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it, it isn't as expensive that way. <laughs> True. It doesn't have to be a fish. Oh, you just say, it's, you know, your honorary dad. Okay, know. honorary would be good. Uh, William That's... Shatner, true or false? Can I ask this? Can I ask these questions? Uh, if I know the answer. No, I think you will. Because, okay, you read a lot of things on the internet. Probably a lot of them are not true. So these things I found on the internet, yeah. I, I think my theory is the internet's 90% made up, right? Made so up, yes. We'll see. 90% is very generous. <laughs> Let's see. It's about 99.9. Yeah, ish. Let's see if any of these are true. Um, every year, true or false, since 1957, you've been in at least one TV show or movie. Have you ever kept? I, maybe you haven't ever kept. No, that. no, that's true. I mean, that's more true. than one. How I, do you keep? I, how do you keep active? Like, well, of course, more than one, just, but at least one. Here's here's what happens. Uh, you got your jaw flapping, right? Then your tongue goes in and out, and you breathe out, and the vocal cords, uh, and so you say words, and that's how you stay employed. Remember that as a broadcaster. I, I will. Right? I will. Yeah. I will. Next, take my take that sage piece of advice from your honorary father. <laughs> my next, my next job uh, review. I will make sure that I keep it moving, so they don't have a chance to fire me. That's, that's right. Exactly. They can never fire the, you. No, you just as long talking. as you keep talking, because <laughs> they're not going to fire you in mid sentence. By the way, you uh, are single handedly responsible for me being terrified flying at night during the rain. Uh, you were in one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes, um, which which has since had some remakes and spoofs and everything. Uh huh. Was it terror at twenty thousand feet? Oh, higher than that. Yeah. Uh, 47, that was it. It's crazy. 37? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Um, and, and there was a monster out on the wing of the plane. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and nobody a, believed you. A Czechoslovakian you. acrobat, actually. Really? Oh, that was yeah. the guy that was He in was the... a guy in a fur suit. He was a, che a Czech acrobat. Um, every time you'd look out, um, he would... He'd be this guy. He'd be there. And then when everybody else looked, he'd hide for That's some right. reason. He'd hide under the... In the wheel well, I guess. I would, I would always think, why is he messing with this guy? Why? Why? Why, why? why? Yeah. why is he messing with me? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that made me terrified of flying. Well, yeah, I nice. can understand that. Yeah. It was good, though. It was amazing. You did a couple of episodes of Twilight Zone. I did. Yeah. There was another one. Uh, see, the, 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 uh, the, con the idea, why is it, why was that show, the terror, whatever, 47,000, 37,000 feet, why was it so popular, stayed so popular for all these years? Mm -hmm. So the answer has to be it touches a universal somewhere. Right. Like your fear of flying. Like if we should be flying, we'd have wings sort of, sort of thing. Right, yeah. So there was another one in which a guy got caught in a small town playing a little machine that gives you the fore uh, foretells the future. Right, 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 right. Y yes, yes, I remember uh, that. And I forgot what they call that yeah, one, yeah. but that too has been popular. So what universal fears are being touched by these things? Because it ha would have to be something that, made people uh, identify emotionally because that's the only reason you you stay connected, connected to an to, audience yeah yeah it's an amazing show too yeah. I, I don't know have you ever done the tower of terror in uh california adventure no oh it's good it's just you good. mean it's a ride it, it's a ride and it's based on twilight zone and oh Ro really they brought rod serling back come on from the dead and he talks to you and it's, it's amazing. a disney thing it's amazing yeah really it, it's basically a space elevator that just drops down well but... here's what i'm going to do okay uh, there is a restaurant in Disneyland. Yes. Uh, uh, Club 33? Is that what you're talking uh, No, oh. I'm thinking of a five-star restaurant mm. at the Disney Hotel oh. in, in Los Angeles, in outside of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. And so every so often, uh, we're invited to that five-star restaurant, which has a back entrance. So the last time I was there, mm -hmm. we ordered, like, the beginning, the, uh, the uh, hors d'oeuvres. We ate the hors d'oeuvres, and between the hors d'oeuvres and the main meal, we went out the back door and went on a ride really yeah and then came back and had and we kept going back and forth there was a fam i had my family there but you're william shatner they'll do anything well, for you that's the point so <laughs> the next time we're at that five-star restaurant yeah between or uh, the beginning of the meal and the middle of the meal the hors d'oeuvres and, and something just happened the light went off but uh, that's okay i lost I'm, my light i uh, we're okay yeah we're, we're still we're, we're still recording yeah um i'm going to go on that ride on on the on the the ride uh, 
that you just mentioned. Right, right. Oh, the, the Tower of Terror. Tower Please. Of Terror. But it's over in California Adventure, which is the, the that's parking a, park. It's that's a, a long distance walk. to go be, a a between walk. between courses. Do it, do it after the main. <laughs> right, right. All right, let me continue. I, I'm so getting off. I, I know you've got, you've got things to do. No, I, to... the only thing I've got to do is to tell you uh-huh. and your audience, come to the... Middle East Film and Comic Con. Comic Con this weekend. Yeah. Uh, I'll be there... Uh, I'll be there. You'll be uh, there sometime. Yeah, Friday and Saturday. and s- Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. and Saturday, yeah, because right. today's Thursday. Our yeah. weekends are on Friday, Saturday. Right, so yeah. I'll be there this weekend, Friday mm. and Saturday. Is it true you once sold a kidney stone? Now, I've seen two figures for either $25,000 or $75,000. No, no. See, the twenty-five is what they offered me. Okay. And the seventy-five is what I would negotiate it for. <gasps> and we gave the money to a charity called Habitat for Humanity, yes. which builds houses. For poor people, for yes. For poor people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gave the money, and we collected another twenty-five from the cast of, this was during Boston Legal, a yeah. show I did in the States, and we gave $100,000 to that charity. For, uh, do you know where the kidney, kidney stone, stone? Where's the kidney stone now? Uh, probably resides on somebody's finger. Wow! <laughs> As an engagement ring. Oh my God! Is is that even remotely true? That sounds like something well, on the internet. Well, uh, I don't know about the ring, but the uh, but the amount of money given to yes, to the charity true. is true. You don't like watching yourself perform, and you've never seen an episode of Star Trek or Boston Legal. That sounds fishy to me. No, no, no. It's true. Really? Yeah. You can't watch yourself. No, I don't like to look at myself. Hmm. But that's, I'm, it's turning out to be not uncommon. Uh, a lot of actors. Uh, the more I, you know, uh, I'm part of another interview, mm. somebody else's interview, either I'm watching it or I'm part of it, they say the same thing. They don't like to watch themselves, so they ignore it. Uh, I've done a lot of directing of stuff I'm in, so I'm forced to, you have to watch, the f- watch the footage, myself. Yeah. It's yeah. very painful. Yeah. Yeah. You should watch this Star Trek. It's pretty good. What's it called again? Star Trek. Uh, and do they have conventions? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of conventions. You, d- you don't need to do these conventions. Uh, no. Okay, here's another internet rumor. But True I don't not. need to do these conventions, but I'm at the Dubai convention because I want to be. That's right. Because this is jaw-dropping. Dubai. Dubai. Is, is dro- jaw-dropping. Or jaw-dropping. Yeah. Um, you once got angry and threw a chair on a set of a game show. True or false? I pretended to be angry. Oh, okay. Uh, I pretended. I uh, They had as their opening me playing against myself. I was the host and a contestant. Okay. Uh, somehow, movie magic, they oh, were able to work right. it. And I lost, even though I, as the host, knew the answer. Right. So in mock anger, I took a chair and threw it. Threw it, yeah. And everybody understood at the time. That it was a joke. That it was a joke. But now in, on the internet, you got mad. There you go. Chair. And now it's assumed a... a uh, a uh, validity that it doesn't have. Well, I feel like throwing a chair. We have plenty. And feel free. It's fine. No, no. These are very heavy chairs, and I'm weaker than I was. You still ride horses regularly. Uh, we compete. My wife and I compete a lot on a variety of of horses, uh, 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 different breeds, uh, different uh, types of horses. And, uh, and I just got off this past weekend in which I won, I'm not sure whether it's seven or nine blue ribbons as uh, in a large, huge class of con- people who are competing. That's amazing. It is amazing. And and, and these are rainers. This is a kind of discipline where you slide to a stop 30 feet and you, and you run back uh, the full length of the arena. I mean, it's very physical. It isn't just standing around. Now, you're... Uh, <clears throat> Forgive me. I, I know a lady never tells Already? her age. You're 84. Yeah. You're 84. I'm what? You're 84. No. Believe it or not. That, you are 84 that, years old. That's on the internet, isn't it? That is. You can't believe anything that's true. you do on the internet. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't. I mean, what is 84? What is 84? What is? I mean, you know, it's just a number. Exactly. But you are. You're amazing. I mean, I mean, that my you, grandmother, when she was 84, I mean, you know. So if you, yes. She wasn't she was, riding horses. No, she was dribbling. <laughs> she was dribbling a little spittle she, from the. She was uh, like, if uh, I raised you better, you uh, wouldn't have had William Shatner for a father. <laughs> um, is it true you wear pantyhose when you ride horses? <gasps> That's hysterical. Is that what you've read there? I have. Okay. So there was a, sh- uh, a movie. Mm. Uh, actually, it was a Star Trek movie. Which, Generations uh, with Patrick Stewart. Generations yep. with Patrick Stewart. So we had to be on horses all day. Mm. So I have done, in the past, event, 25 miles okay. events, where I had scraped my legs raw and was bleeding into my boots because of the distance. I learned after that that you should wear pantyhose to stop the abrasion of if you're going to do event, 
uh, riding like that. Uh-huh. So when we were going to spend all day on a horseback, I said to Patrick Stewart, wear pantyhose so that at the end of the day you're not scraped raw. And he wore his pantyhose on the outside. <laughs> 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 that's amazing. So oh, it's no, not that's some, a story. Not yeah. something you normally do. You don't normally wear pantyhose. No, and I'll no, just, no. Uh, just, uh, no, I, or, I'll, normally I'll, I don't wear pantyhose. I'll get rid of these pantyhose. Well, no, I'll take them and my okay. wife will wear them. I wear pantyhose when I do radio. It's, it's it's not, it doesn't make it safer or more comfortable. Oh, these are nice pantyhose. They are. I might wear them. They're, st- <laughs> They're striped. <laughs> They're striped. No, no, I, I might very well. One, five, one size fits most. <laughs> I'd 5'4 to 5'8 and weight 100, 125 to 160 pounds. About, about about my. I think you look fetching. Look good. You yeah. look fetching in those. <laughs> well, you wear something else in addition to that. Do you? Oh. Yeah, we're in Dubai. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also play paintball? Is that true? You like paintball? I put on what I understand to be the largest paintball uh, event ever. There were 5,000 people uh, outside of Chicago in the United States, and uh, Joliet, it's a small town. Uh, near Chicago, had 170 acres, and what that is in hectares, two and a half hectares to 2.2 hectares. So that's 75, so roughly 70 hectares. It's big, yeah, it's, especially it's for paintball. Exactly. It's exhausting. And there were three or four major um, buildings, things that you would use, like uh, a used car lot, a village, a village. In those uh, ac- in that acreage, in which the fight took place, this paintball, there were three teams of approximately fifteen hundred to two thousand people each, firing paintballs at each other. Were you one of them? I was one of the captains. Oh, okay. And there were two other captains, and um, and it went. It was for charity. It went all day. I came in on. I I made my entrance because uh, I was shooting it. I I did a. Uh, a documentary of it so as an entrance i did paramotoring i used to, i do paramotoring where you have a kite on your back and a motor on your back and you run like hell uh, <laughs> to get flying speed which is about 13 miles an hour so you got to run that's 13 pretty, miles an fast. hour to inflate yeah. the kite yep. meanwhile you've got a propeller on your back uh, it's heavy about 75 pounds <laughs> on your back so you and then you jump and you hope that you've attained enough sp- speed to fly <laughs> and then i flew over a large river the ohio river uh, which they were power yeah uh electrical wires oh, so that if you hit the water or hit the water uh, the power you'd be dead you're in trouble uh, yeah. no no <laughs> no trouble no trouble at all you're dead <laughs> <laughs> and then landed on the 170 acres and we began the paintball thing oh, you're amazing i love you i don't know how you do some of this stuff i wouldn't do some of that stuff now um i i, I feel Amazed that I'm just in Dubai well, and at this uh, at this uh, Comic Con, Middle East filming Comic Con. Uh, and where is it again? It's at the Dubai World oh, Trade Center is, yeah. all weekend. Oh. Uh, last true or false? Our boss, Richard Branson, Virgin Radio, right? Uh, wait, wait, Bri- uh, Richard Branson. Yeah, he owns Virgin. He owns radio. this radio station, does, and all of them. They're all around the world. He owns radio stations in addition to going into space? He owns everything. He I does, doesn't he, he? Everything that's not American. He invited me to go... Exactly what I was going to ask. He invited yeah. you to go in space, but yeah. he refused to pay for it. Right, he wanted $250,000. That's true, so that I is said, true. no, no, you got the wrong idea. <laughs> you pay me $250,000, and I'll leave it to my children what when we crash. What a cheapskate. What a cheapskate. I'm telling you, that's Branson what I told is. him. He never spoke to me again. Richard Branson, this is William Shatner. Please, boss. <laughs> I called him sir. It had no effect whatsoever. No, no. I think he kind of expects it, actually. Now. He's knighted. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a part for you in the next Star Trek? That's another one that came out. There's a part for you in the next Star Trek. Well, then nobody's told me about it, but if you if discover there is, please let me know. So you are more than willing to come back and play this huge... What a character. great payday that would oh, be. Oh, of course it would. <laughs> <laughs> so there's nothing there's nothing stopping you I've heard you. nothing no I okay. think they're filming it now so I guess it's it says it's pre-production it says pre-production it's in pre-production that's what it says on the internet uh, I, don't know. I don't know what that means I thought I thought they were shooting while we were someplace last I was someplace not so long ago and they said they were shooting there where was I where was it where were we last where they were shooting it's not going to be shooting until August 
Oh, so it won't be shooting till August. And then, and then you'll take part in it, Well, right? they, theoretically, they have the script, so yeah. it doesn't call for me, I, I guess. Yeah, it has to happen. I, I mean, I, I think, I mean, obviously, Leonard Nimoy reprised his role a couple I of know, different times. I know, I mean, you should be there. I, I would think, but no. No. J.J. Abrams. But he didn't, he not say, did not J.J. say um, that they were trying to work you into the first one, the first remake, somehow. He called me one day, uh-huh. and we had... Uh, lunch a couple of times actually I think of him as a as a, a really neat acquaintance uh, and uh, I'm not quite sure what he thinks I am to him uh, and uh, we talked we had a good time uh, and in fact the story is that he hired a director who then I think wrote a script and uh, involved me I think in any case the director called me uh, no, uh, J.J. called me and said, would I like to be in one? And I said, of course, but it has to be a, a good part. He said, of course. And we put the phone, and then as he put the phone down, he said, don't tell anybody. So I said, okay. And he put the phone down, I put the phone down. And I was in, I think, in Hawaii. When I arrived back in L.A. a day or so later, greeted by a group of reporters saying, we understand you're in the, I said, how, do you, how did you know that? They said, well, the director has released a statement. Okay, mm. that he's directing and you're in it, and I had some fun with JJ the following day. Say thanks a lot. No, he 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 sends a message to me saying thanks a lot. I told you not to say anything. I said back, hey, it wasn't me. I think it was your director. And then he, in joking, at least I thought it was a joke, sent back an email mail saying, well, let's fire the director. Shortly thereafter, <laughs> that's amazing. The director's gone, and they got a whole new thing going. Oh, but you're still not in Star Trek. That's, that's I the... still am, I am still not in Star Trek. And it needs to happen. That's correct. What TV shows do you watch now? Do you watch any TV? Did you I watch, do. Do you watch Dancing with the Stars? Did I see you tweeting about Dancing with I the Stars? I love yet? Dancing with the Stars. Would you go on Dancing with the Stars? Because you seem like the perfect kind of guy. Well, I'm asked every year. Okay. And, okay. Uh, and? and But they want you for four months. They want to pay you? And they pay you, okay. but not commensurately. Uh. Uh, not for a guy who can go to Dubai. And uh, <laughs> so four months is a long time in my life. I got a lot of stuff to do, yeah. and I can't. You can't make that kind of commitment. I can't make that kind because of Because there's also training, not just the TV show. Oh, there's weeks of there's training before. Before. I'd love the training. I'd love to have the legs. I'm not sure my, my legs would, uh, uh, at this point, stand up but, uh, to yeah. all that. I have never watched that show ever, but if you were on it, I'm there. I'm telling you, it's a great show. And then they need to pay a little more commensurate, if you know what I mean. Right. The, the word commensurate is... <laughs> and and uh, it's a great show because not only is it beautiful dancing, and you watch the people evolve, you watch the relationships inv- evolve. Right. And that, to me, is... Uh, it's more interesting intriguing. probably than the dancing, right? Oh, yeah. No, no. It's always about... Who's looking at yeah. who, oh, yeah. whose hand went to the... The inadvertent, the uh, nonverbal language that's expressed in an hour and a half by people who are in front of a camera and have lost consciousness that the camera is there. Mm. You know, after a while, like speaking into the microphone, you lose sight of the fact you're speaking to, what, millions of people, oh, I'm yeah. sure, are, are, yeah. are your audience. You lose... Millions. You lose sight. Well, they, Ish. They, well, they don't have uh, valid uh, ways of ascertaining how many people are listening to you. I happen to know it happens to be millions, and I want you to bring that information back I will. to the people who pay you. At the same time, I do the review where I don't stop talking. Right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're online a lot. You do Twitter You do Twitter all the time. I Twitter. Um, and you're on Reddit as well. I'm on Reddit, and I'll, I'll see you pop up once well, I, I'm I'm on a lot of stuff yeah. uh, in an effort to keep in contact with the audience, find out what they're doing. Yeah, It, it makes us feel, it, well, it makes you seem like just a really regular cool guy that just the, likes to the, communicate with the, the fans. fact of the matter is that's what i am uh amazing to talk to you thank you so much for, for hanging out with us and welcome to i hope you just, just enjoyed dubai we have amazing horses here unbelievable i'm going to go see some horses yeah i'm going to see the city by a yacht i'm going to there's a lot of things i'm going to do that be unusual that i'll treasure for the rest of my life which may not be that long <laughs> please <laughs> you're going to outlive us all I guarantee, Uh, I guarantee, uh, 100 plus, 100 plus. uh, William Shatner.